type you are on, and I, I think I suffer from a similar problem with my either your name, right? My name is Nur. That's how people pronounce it here, which is a bit of a challenge. I, I'll try to uh, uh, talk about social entrepreneurship. And the funny thing is, even though it, it has become the flavor of the month mm -hmm. in the last few years, still when I tell people that my organization has coined the term social entrepreneurship and is spreading it in 84 countries now, people ask me, what's that? It sounds like an oxymoron, social entrepreneurship, right? You're either an entrepreneur or social people, tell me. Uh, but this is not necessarily the case. Uh, and because it, it has become the flavor of the month, I'm going to get a call from someone. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so, uh, and because it has become the flavor of the month, I think we should pause for a second and try to understand what it is. When we talk about social entrepreneurship, and Ashona has coined the term 32 years ago, we talk about coming up with new solutions to world problems. Education, environment, health, uh, earthquakes, and all that stuff. Uh, we try to talk about systemic social change. I think the most important word is the word systemic. And if you are familiar with the eight degrees of charity of the Maimonides, right? It's not about giving people fish. It's not even about teaching them how to fish. When we talk about social entrepreneurship, we're looking for the person who will change the fishing industry. I'm looking for the person who will say, instead of using rods, use nets. It's going to be much easier. Instead of fishing in the daytime, do it in the nighttime because the bigger fish come overnight. But I, I, I have no idea. I, I know nothing about fishing. But let me entertain this metaphor for another minute. Instead of fishing, let's take a step back and realize that the problem is not fishing but feeding. And there are no more fish in the sea, let's do soybeans or donuts or whatever. So the thing is, a shop has all the term that if you want to use the presentation, why not? Too many presentations, too little time. I can easily send it to you later if you want. The whole idea is we're looking for those people around the world, people who are actually changing the world. And we give them three main things: recognition, financial support, and access to network. Right? My personal story, I did my PhD in England, and when I realized academia is way too, uh, how should I put it? Polite. Too academic for me, right? Let's be nice. Too academic, uh, especially when you do it in uh, Cambridge. I was a proud member of Jesus College Cambridge, right? The joke in Cambridge is that there are two colleges named after Jews, Wolfson and Jesus, right? And I was rowing for Jesus and playing basketball for Jesus and uh, sending Shabbat Shalom for Jesus and trying to compete with Moran's uh, stand-up qualities in Jesus. Uh, and, and of course, the nice thing of where the football games, where you have uh, Jesus versus Darwin or Kings versus Queens. Anyway, finish my PhD, you realize life is too short. And I'm interested in practical knowledge, not in academic knowledge, no respect to the ivory tower. And I read a book that had changed my life written by, surprise, surprise, a good Jewish boy from Montreal who wrote his first book on Mohammed Yunus, Mohammed Yunus, Mohammed Yunus, Nobel Peace Prize laureate, microfinance from Bangladesh, right? He wrote his first book about Mohammed Yunus, and when Mohammed Yunus told him I'm a social entrepreneur, he said again, Shuhab, what's that social entrepreneur? It's either social or entrepreneur. Mohammed sent David to meet Bill. When Bill met David, sounds like a movie, right? When Bill met David, Fell in love with the concept, wrote the book that the New York Times has heralded as the Bible in the field of social entrepreneurship. Everything is so Jewish and religious. And the Bible in the field of social entrepreneurship, which is modestly titled, How to Change the World. Of course, small scale, no pretension at all. I read this book, and the book is one of those almost too inspiring American books. I should be careful what I say, right? It was almost too cheesy, right? You read about those amazing people doing amazing things in amazing places, look at them jumping, swimming, brushing their teeth, and join them. But if you manage to see through the marshmallow, you realize we are talking about people who are actually changing the world. Literally. Education, environment, health, some of the solutions you, you see here, some of the solutions you can see in other places. Join the organization, serve for three years in Washington, D.C. It was lovely to be out of Cambridge and to see real people doing real things. Uh, and then after three years, I realized it's time to bring this organization to Israel. Of course, because if you think about Israel, first of all, Israel is a social startup itself, to begin with, right? And when you talk about social entrepreneurship, the whole place, and of course, kibbutz, and of course, education, and of course, all that, is social entrepreneurship. 
And Israel was famous for all these things back in the 40s and 50s, and something went wrong. Uh, we discontinued the conversation that started back then, if to use this thing. I thought bringing a shoulder blade would be great. My bosses said no. I said, what do you mean no? They said Israel is important, but not important enough. Because with all respect, bringing a shoka and the whole gospel of social entrepreneurship to China might be slightly more impactful. Or talking about systemic social change in Russia might be more urgent, especially when we're talking about the Olympics now and Sochi and all that stuff, might be slightly more important than bringing it to Israel. However, they said, if you're such a social entrepreneur, convince us. Tell us why Israel is so important for Ashoka, why Ashoka is so important for Israel. Timing is everything. Startup Nation was published back then. I bought the book to all my board, and I said, you see, Israel is already a startup nation in high tech and biotech. We should make sure that Israel will be, and will be famous for being a startup nation in education, environment, health, and all these things. Raise the money, of course, raise the money in, in, in countries outside of the US, outside of Israel, move to Israel, and I'll give you some stories. Again, the presentation is not that important. A person called Shai Reshef, who was the founder of Kidum in Israel. Kidum is what Kaplan does in this country. Test prep and all these uh, GMAT and stuff. Sold it to Kaplan, and three years ago, created the University of the People. The name sounds a bit funny, right? The University of the People, you think about Sickle and Hammer and all that stuff. But it's the world's first online free university. You can enroll as a student. He already has 2,500 students, of which 200 are from Indonesia, 11 are from Syria, and you can get a degree for free. If this is not tikkun olam and oral aguim and systemic social change and change in the fishing industry, what is? And we support him. We put him. Uh, we brought him to the Clinton Global Initiative. We put him in touch with Gates. We are kind of facilitators, if you think about it. Uh, a combination of a social startup, trade union, advocacy group. We've supported so far 3,000 people in 80 countries or 70 countries or whatever, however you want to count it, depends what country is today. And these people change the world, and Israel has a lot to contribute to this conversation. We were just not part of, we were not sitting at the table until now. Things were happening somewhere else, we were not part of it. Another example, an impressive guy from Nazareth. Again, everything is super biblical, whatever you touch, you will throw a stone. No, I shouldn't use a throw a stone metaphor. Um, an impressive guy from Nazareth, his name is Abbas Abbas, has an LLM, LLB from the Hebrew U, MBA from Haifa. He's a blind person, and he has created, three years ago, an organization, no, 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 no. I gave myself permission to speak for the next 20 minutes. Um, one of the Ashoka mantras is give yourself permission, right? So I try to embody the message of my organization. So what Abbas, what Abbas did, he created an organization called Almanara, the Lighthouse, which is the first self-help organization for people with disabilities in the Arab world ever. Not only in Israel, ever, right? The first time that a blind is leading the blind, ha ha ha, right? Or in a much more productive way, happens in Nazareth thanks to Abbas. Now, the beautiful thing is Ashoka has a network in the Western countries, but also in Egypt. We have Ashoka fellows in Jordan, in Lebanon, in Palestine, wherever that is. And we, 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 we said we shouldn't talk about politics, right? The Ashoka Fellows in Palestine, we can create this network in which Abbas from Nazareth can actually change the Arab world thanks to our help. Last example. The firstborn, the daughter of, of Vadi Yosef, Adina Bashalom, an incredible woman doing a similar thing for the Haredi community. The two most challenging and challenged communities in Israel, as you may know, are the Haredi, the ultra orthodox, roughly 20%, and the Arab population, again, roughly 20% growing much faster than the secular Jewish population. What, Adina, again, the daughter of Ovadi Yosef, right? When I try to tell Americans, who is she? Who she is? I say, imagine like the daughter of the Pope, right? In terms of the influence, Ovadi Yosef is like the Pope. Imagine the daughter of the Pope, assuming the Pope could have a daughter and all that stuff, changing <laughs> the Catholic Church from within. And that's exactly what Adina does. She has created the first ultra-orthodox academic institution ever, saying in order to bring them to closer to the rest of society, talking and having you know coexistence group and blah, 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 excuse me, is wonderful. 
something much more productive is giving them, I will never stop, though, never. Uh, <laughs> doing something slightly more productive, you have to come and drag me now. Um, something slightly more productive is to give them education and profession and give them self-esteem. So all of a sudden, thanks to Adina, again, the daughter of the Pope, right? The daughter of Leyla Vadi Yosef. Haredi men and women can have a degree in psychology. Can you imagine reconciling Freud and God to prominent Jewish features, right? Doing all these things, and by so doing, she's creating a better Israel. The beautiful thing is she's also changing the world because we are now bringing her model to other traditional countries like Indonesia, in which women's education can learn a lot from Adina. What's the name of the organization? Ashoka. We can go back. And, and Ashoka. Ashoka was, Ashoka was an Indian. Haredi Institute Jerusalem. Talk to me later. Um, anyway, the whole idea is that Israel is changing the world already. There are incredible minds, just like in design and in high tech, doing social change. We just, and it's a big just, as Ido and David and other people know, we just have to bring them to the world and try to make sure that Israel is part of this conversation. So it's broadening, enhancing, enhancing, deepening, and of course making sure that we will have a nice and Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.